What Yuri Slavkovsky said today will shock you, and it's unbelievable the maturity for this guy. He shows his killer confidence. We gotta get into what he said about himself and the Habs organization. Plus, of course, the Habs versus the Boston Bruins. Slav and Suzuki and Caulfield once again showing some unbelievable chemistry as they are making some. Uh, well, they're on some historic pace. So we gotta talk about all of that coming up on this episode of Habs Digest. You know what? We're just gonna talk about the game. First and foremost, in a game that felt like a playoff atmosphere from the opening puck drop, Jesse Habs versus Bruins is always fantastic, but this game was on another level. Of course, the Habs, one of the bottom feeders in the league, the Bruins near the top. And once again, Montreal is holding their own against one of the best teams in the league. Monty with an amazing performance, but uh, we got to talk again about that Slavkovsky-Suzuki connection. Slav with the borderline no-look pass as Olmark was completely fooled thinking he was going to shoot it, who saw Suzuki going backdoor for the beautiful goal. Um, this top line is clicking on a complete another level now, Jesse. Slavkovsky himself, like, these plays are something, if you showed me this kind of stuff, you know, the first couple months of his rookie season last year, I wouldn't have believed that he has come this far this fast. It's all about that killer confidence for Uri Slavkovsky. And this is the type of play that's really going to ingratiate himself to Martin St. Louis because when he's just putting it on an absolute platter for Nick Suzuki to bury home to basically, you know, one of the best goalies in the league, Allmark not being able to make a play, you know you're making a solid play when you're making that good. A Vesna quality goalie just looks silly, basically just taking a seat on the ice watching that go in right that's the level of intelligence and also confidence that Slav is playing with right now and I think that's one of the biggest things from this takeaway from this very close game where we we're fighting you know right there until the end obviously we had such a good chance to kind of bury that you know with some power plays there in that second period with new hook and everything alas it wasn't meant to be but I mean Slav was really the catalyst again for me tonight is you know did he have a perfect game no but was he really the fire starter on the power play that once the puck went to him, things started happening every time. And it seems like the more he takes ownership over this team and the more he decides, OK, I need to be a little bit more selfish. I need to shoot this. The better this team will become. Exactly. Like, and that's the thing. I think part of it is like, dude, sometimes you just got to shoot it. And that pass, while amazing. Well, I guess it's sort of smart on a whole nother level. Like, I think everyone in the world thought he was going to shoot it, but we've seen enough of Slap that he hasn't quite gotten that crazy level of confidence to where he's shooting absolutely everything. But uh, man, what a play. And you're very right. These board battles he's winning, these heads up plays he's making, these crisp passes. It's it's unbelievable. But uh, we're going to talk plenty about Slap later in this video. And trust me, you're going to want to stick around for that. This Oh, you're going to fall more in love with him. I don't even know if that's possible. You're going to fall more in love with him than you, you already are. But uh, we want to talk about uh, some other stuff going on. I thought Cole Caulfield tonight, Jesse, just a little quick note on him. We've been talking a lot this season about his playmaking and how that has really been uh, sort of a, a boost for him this year. While his goal scoring is not where we want it to be, and Suzuki has sort of taken over that goal scoring, this guy's going to get 30 goals. It's basically written in the stars now. What's he at? 27 now? 26, 27? Unbelievable. Um, but Caulfield, he basically played a power forward role on that Suzuki goal, getting another assist. Like, like I, I mean, his playmaking, I think, has arguably helped unlock Slap on that other level. And even unlock Suzuki as this 30 goal type of guy. Yeah, they're all growing and developing, right? And it's so amazing when we thought, okay, it's Cole Caulfield just as a goal scorer before. He's now going to become so much more dangerous when he's that double threat, not just shooting, but then knowing that he can set somebody else. And of course, they all kind of complement and help having these additional options and really completing that first line with your Slavkovsky, like you said, Josh, allows for those playmaking opportunities. So it's really beautiful to see how they're all complementing each other. Nick Suzuki always kind of known as the playmaker now being that goal scorer, right? And I think they're each going to evolve. I think Cole Caulfield's still going to get back to scoring goals, but once he does that, he's just going to be so much more of a well-rounded player without forgetting the strides he's taken, his defensive play, picking up his checks, back-checking and everything else so far this year. Yeah, speaking of defensive play, excuse me, the Habs penalty kill over the last, I think, three weeks now is number one in the NHL. I don't think they've allowed a power play goal in their last eight 
13 penalties killed. And tonight, well, there was a prime opportunity for Boston. While the Habs were on a power play, Nick Suzuki with his hand on his stick up in the air gets bumped from behind by Pavel Zaka, accidentally stabbing McAvoy in the face for a four-minute double minor. Can't really argue it. It's just extremely unfortunate. But the Habs killed it off in such a clutch moment. So what an awesome game from everyone involved there tonight. The Habs putting on a defensive clinic against the Boston Bruins, one of these top teams in the NHL. Yeah, it ended quick in overtime. Look, Mike Matheson, I know a lot of you are going to be hating on Matheson for that play. Don't want to dwell on it too much. Hey, the Habs got one point against the Bruins, push them to overtime. I think we're happy with that. Um, let's transition into something else, though. And I, I wanted to talk, we're kind of actually sticking on the same note of Caulfield and Slavkovsky, but you guys are going to want to check this out. I saw this posted on Twitter this morning, and, uh, well, it was just a very interesting stat about different point leaders for different ages in the NHL. It was the top point getters for each age. Now, these ages are of January 31st, which is, I believe, how Hockey Reference defines, like, for example, if you're 23 on January 31st of a season, that's considered your age 23 season. So, as you can see, Uri Slavkovsky has the most points for any 19-year-old this year, and Cole Caulfield has the most points for any 23-year-old. And yes, I know, if you look above and below Slavkovsky, you got 51 points above and below while well, he is 34, and Caulfield 62 above, and Jack Hughes, who hasn't even played that many games, and Quinn Hughes below. I get it. They're kind of like a bit lower than maybe you would want, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter because we're comparing them to their peers, other guys the same age as them. Caulfield is the best, has the best point production of anyone his age in the NHL this year. Uri Slavkovsky is the same thing. And I think this just goes back to how the Habs are helping grow their players. Like, this is actually unbelievable to me. And for all the, like, maybe not hate, but a lot of the flack Caulfield and Slav, well, not so much Slav anymore, but Caulfield still gets for the lack of goal scoring again, like... The fact that these guys are still performing at that level relative to their peers is an extremely good sign. Absolutely. And historically speaking, there is a huge jump in production from being a 19-year-old in the NHL to a 20-year-old in the NHL. So definitely expect that quantum leap even further with U.S. Slavkovsky. But again, one of the major takeaways from this graph is that we have two of the youngest players on this that are really leading their peers, right? So if again, if you're looking to really look at the future of your team and, and how the rebuild is going to look. Just the fact that we have these young players, obviously Caulfield signed that long-term extension. We have him locked down. Obviously Suzuki is not that much older. Slaff, you know, that contract's coming. Just the way, like when you have these young guys that are performing so well relative to their peers, just what allows you to kind of open up, it gives you so much runway with themselves being younger of how you now want to craft the rest of your team, right? So this is not to be underestimated at all. What they're really doing this year, they're there with, really the best in the league you know and rightfully so yeah well hey hopefully as the years go on as Caulfield turns 24 he'll still be there and Slav turns 20 he'll still be there for the age 20 and like that's kind of what we hope going forward so just a really cool note on that is it transitions well from the first topic but uh, speaking of transitions this is a Slav centric video if uh, if you guys didn't know Slavkovsky's killer confidence as we mentioned earlier we have some more stuff to show you now so Uri Slavkovsky he makes blog posts on NHL.com for like Slovak and stuff like that he posts it in English but uh he has some really interesting insights and I'm just gonna play the slap cell animation because my goodness oh you guys are gonna be so happy looking at this stuff because like we we basically couldn't stop smiling when we were looking at this earlier so the first thing we got to show you is this he basically said against the Blue Jackets, I scored my 14th goal of the year. Yes, he is writing this in the first person. It's amazing. Yes, I'm seeing good progress when I compare to my rookie season, but no, I'm still not happy with my production. That's 14 goals in 65 games. It's not enough in this league. Even though I would like to have more goals and points, I feel like there's great growth in my game. I trust myself. I can create plays and I'm developing a greater bond with Nick and Cole. I'm happy with my progress, even if it can always be better. And he said something clicked when he was first put with Nick and Cole in the same article. He also went on to say that he's been very happy with Arbor Jack. I saying he knows he's not just a fighter, but he can join the offensive. They spend a lot of time together, join the team together, have his fingers crossed. Um, but this is Jesse, like, I don't know many adults that have that kind of maturity slaps is to be able to say, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of my progress. I know I'm doing well. However, I don't think it's enough to stay in this league. I want to do more. It's like the self-awareness, but also the confidence to say, yeah, I know I got what it takes. I just, I don't know. I, I, it makes me want to go buy a Slav jersey immediately. What, what he is saying is I, I don't know any other 19 year old in the NHL or even 20 year old that, for that matter, that'll say something like this. You know, and it's because he knows it as well, you know, and to be honest, it's like, I he's already exceeding my expectations for him. And I was already like, and we were already big slap guys from last. We were calling him Slapzilla as of last year. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he's starting to be like almost better 
than what we thought. It's just for a lot of these same reasons, right? And again, noting that since the new year, it's basically been a new slap. And if you look at his statistics, since the new year, especially January 15th, since he joined that first line, he's leading the Canadians in one-timers. He's near the very top. He's second in chances generated. I mean, just statistically speaking, the eye test shows it, but it's interesting to see the numbers are as well, you know? So, I mean, he really deserved it though. You know, it's oh, yeah. he worked his way onto that first line. He had to work for every part of it, but Martin St. Louis really had a great plan. Even when we wanted there, him there a little bit earlier, Martin said we knew, okay, no, make him work for it a little bit more. So once he really gets there, he's going to be ready. Making that right change January 15th, and he's really taken off the training wheels from there. It's just been amazing to see his development. Yeah, it's crazy. He's now turning into a one-time threat on the power play. He's turning into a guy that can win every single board battle for you. He's starting to have more and more zone entries every single game. You're seeing him make correct plays in front of the net, which takes... Well, a lot of players never even get that sense in their whole career. So just, but all this stuff comes from his desire to work harder and be better. And yeah, we're not seeing these crazy counting stats like you might expect for a first overall pick quite yet. Hey, again, he's 19. We, that stuff's going to come. And like, yeah, I mean, no one said he was going to be a generational talent, but however, with his work ethic, with what we've seen from him so far, with the coaching staff, the focus and development, and with a guy that says he's not done until he gets what he wants, I think we have an amazing future ahead. And what do you guys think? We'd love to hear your thoughts on Slavkovsky's game tonight, what he had to say about himself and his development. There's just so much to love about this guy, and I can't wait to see him sign that eight-year extension when that time comes. But for now, that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment. Comment, subscribe. You know what? No, just leave a like. That's all we ask. You guys are doing that like crazy, really. We love that. Love when you leave a like. So if you're still listening, click that button now. Hey, helps you out, helps us out. What what is there to lose? <laughs> I've been your host, Josh Goss, my co-host, Jesse Poggy. We'll catch you in the next one.